Discover Pro is the full Discover app in Pyramid for Pro users to author and build reports and visualizations, perform ad hoc interactive analytics, and create content for dashboards and publications. It's the venue to build visualizations, make query selections, apply styling, configure filters and sorting, integrate calculations and KPIs, and more. The other versions of Discover are simplified to offer a lighter experience. They include natural language querying and the chatbot for search and text-driven analysis, smart discovery for AI-driven query and visualizations, and Discover Lite, which is a simplified experience from Discover Pro. To launch Discover Pro, open the Discover module from the home page or from the app tab menu and select a data model to query. Generally, data sources are exposed based on your security access. The Discover Pro workspace contains several main items. At the top, we have the ribbon menu where you have access to formatting, query functions and settings. A lot of these buttons are split with the top of the button activating or deactivating the default behavior and the bottom half of the button exposing more options. So for example, we've got the workspace button here, click the top to reset the interface or click the bottom for different layout options. Notice the large button in the top left hand corner. This is the execute button, which is used when you want to manually run a query. The metadata of your data model are stored in tree structures shown here. The trees allow you to navigate hierarchies, measures and members. Right click on a hierarchy to see its member elements. In this tree you can see the data model's measures or metric values. Next is the drop zone panel which is needed for building queries. You use them by dragging and dropping the hierarchies and measures into the drop zones to make your selections. And last is the canvas where your visualizations are drawn. To start building, double click on a hierarchy. Let's use the product categories hierarchy, which automatically adds it to the rows drop zone of a matrix grid, which is the default visualization. You can change the default visual in your personal user settings. Now let's open up the customer profile dimension and drag the gender hierarchy to the columns drop zone. Next, go to the measures tree and open up the data folder and double click or check the sales metric. This adds sales to the value drop zone. By moving the items or chips as they're called, you can change the look of your grid. Right clicking on the canvas, we can access quick interactive functionality in the context menus. The functions displayed will depend on where you click. For example, we can flip the rows with columns using the pivot function. And we can also do this from the ribbon using the pivot button. The context menu lets us access classic analytic functions like drill down, dicing, filtering, and sorting. Let's swap out the product category hierarchy for country using the swap function. Country is a multi-level hierarchy, so we see plus buttons here. We can use these to expand the country details out to other levels of the hierarchy or to collapse these levels. Since it's a multi-level hierarchy, we can also double click any of these items to drill down. Alternatively, we can use the right click context menu for drill. To undo your changes in sequence, click the undo button. Next, we'll use the add context function to add a new hierarchy to the rows of the grid. I'll add promotion category. Then let's use the dice function to explain reseller sales by the manufacturer hierarchy. Dicing effectively allows you to drill down on an element in one hierarchy by another hierarchy. Let's filter the grid by a top five count and then sort the grid in ascending order. 
Many of the quick functions are shortcuts to more advanced tools found in the ribbons. Last, let's add some totals to our grid. And then let's save our report. And I'll save this to my content when no one else will have access to it. Now let's look at creating a column chart. This button here creates a new report on the same data source. Let's start by dragging months to the column chart visual icon. And then double clicking on the expenses metric. Adding a second measure, quantity, will auto trellis the visualization. Now let's drag product category to the color drop zone. You can see that the charts show four series of data for each category. To remove bikes from the analysis, right click on bikes in a legend and choose eliminate. Members of a hierarchy can also be included or excluded using the elements tree. Double click on the hierarchy chip to jump to its elements tree over here. Any changes to the elements tree need to be manually triggered with the execute button. Now let's give more context to the chart by adding the year hierarchy to filters, which will materialize a year slicer. We can switch to a different visual using the visual toolbox. Let's change this to a stacked column chart or an area chart or a line chart. With each visualization, a tab of visualization options is shown in the ribbon. Let's turn on data points. Now let's add product category to the shaped drop zone. Notice that the legend has changed accordingly. If we remove product category from shapes and replace it with gender, we'll get our monthly data with a series for each combination of product category and gender. All aspects of the chart are interactive. Now let's save our new report to my personal folder. Now let's make some adjustments to the chart. First, duplicate the report. We'll change the chart to a column chart and remove the gender hierarchy. Then combine the two measures into a single combo chart. We can do this by dragging the quantity metric to the sub drop zone options of the values zone. Choose to set the secondary axis as a line chart. Shifting the order of the orange value chips will rearrange the lines to be on top of the bars. Next, let's remove product category from color. Instead, we'll use sales values to color the expense bars from high to low. And we'll use the returns metric to change the size of each bar in the chart. By using drop zones and sub drop zones, it's possible to create an incredibly large number of visual permutations beyond the standard 50 plus core charts found in Pyramid. For our last act, let's duplicate our original grid and remove the filters and sorting, and then add expenses to the grid. By control selecting the sales and then expenses column headers, we can use the context menu to add a quick calculation. Let's choose percentage variance, which is auto added to our query. Right clicking on the new calculation in the grid, we can apply some conditional formatting, which changes the colors of the cells in our query based on their values. Next, from the measure tree, Right click on our new calculation to edit its name, format mask and solve order. These quick calculations can be edited more deeply with a full graphic editor in the orange formulate app. Instead of using our new metric as another value column, let's use it to drive a simple KPI indicator 
to give me a quick sense of what's up and what's down. Now we're going to pick Princess and Essex and aggregate them into a single item while listing the remaining items using the group calculations. To get a better view of the grid, I'll move the legend to the bottom of the canvas and collapse all of the panels. Now let's save this report. And from here, I'll attach an alert to email me when this data point increases in the future. The alert should be triggered at 9 a.m. every day. I'll also begin a conversation thread with my colleagues to question why the figures here have decreased so much since my last review. This completes our whirlwind overview of Discover Pro, highlighting some of its core functions and capabilities. For a deeper review of these features and the many items that couldn't be included in this video, check out the video tutorial section in Online Help or follow our blog series on the community forum.